So I decided to make this little video because a lot of people are confused about what you can and cannot do with poly objects. So I made this very simple map, which is just two rooms. We have our player start at the top and we have a separate section on the right with our poly object already set up. Well, the lines for the poly object. Here we have our poly object start spot. The angle is one, which is the index of our poly object. Here we have the anchor, which also has the angle of one. Here we have our poly object start line with poly object number one, which is needed to make the whole thing work. And on the sides, we have uh, walls with poly object door slide and the poly object number one set to repeatable action when player presses use the movement angle is west so it's going to go left the distance is 60 the length of the lines is 64 so it's going to slide left and stick out of the wall a little bit now how to make the whole thing work a lot of people will use what was used in hexen the void poly object so we can delete this sector and we create a void space the lines around this void space which i already textured are single-sided impassable lines and there is nothing inside them and this is the traditional poly object which will be infinitely tall let's go test it here is our traditional poly object a sliding door infinitely tall and obviously it blocks movement and sight but this is not the only way Control z now we have a sector again and we are going to try something different because the fact is the start spot and the anchor transplant the whole geometry that is next to the poly object anchor so Instead of doing a void poly object, we are going to do something else. Here we have our lines. They all have middle textures right now. They shown to middle textures. And let's select all four of them. And I am even going to give them translucency by lowering the alpha to 0 0.5. These are double-sided, non-blocking, translucent walls. Will this work? Let's try. Yes, it will. It transplants all of the lines and it doesn't even block movement because these are passable double-sided walls and they are translucent and they still work you can still activate them and it still works now we can make them impassable we can give them the block everything flag for example and let's test this again and here we go we have a translucent poly object that blocks movement and uh, blocks side, I don't remember if it blocks monster side. But this is not all we can do. Now I'm going to remove those uh, middle lines and I'm going to raise the sector's floor. Now this is a piece of raised sex sector floor and uh, I'm going to give it textures as well. I just like Sean 2 so I'm going to cover everything in Sean 2. and. Uh, now this is a raised floor, this is not a void sector. Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Here we have a piece of raised floor. The whole raised floor was transferred, but due to some limitations in the engine, the top plane is not rendered, but we can move above it. Now this will not work as a platform. It will not carry us if we try to stand on it, but we can stand on it. So again, all of the geometry is transplanted now I'm going to do something else I'm going to lower the ceiling texture it the same way and now I'm going to add a little window in it so I am adding another line into it attaching it like this now I, I need to remove the second polar object start line that was created this way and I'm going to give it a middle texture shown to again on both sides and I'm going to reduce its alpha to 0 0.5 and now we have this little construct like a door with a window let's see if it works yes it does again due to limitations the bottom and the top of the 
raised uh, floor and the lower ceiling do not render, but it works. All of the geometry is transplanted into the map. So all of these methods can be used and you can basically create more or less anything as long as you have the start line and anchor and start spot set up correctly. That's not all, however. When I say that all of the geometry is transplanted, I mean all of the geometry. So right now I am back to a middle texture poly object with the lines set to block everything and they have translucency and middle textures. Now I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment here to demonstrate something very important. I'm going to take the control sector with the poly object and I'm going to raise it. So it's going to extend from 128 to 256 instead of 0 and 128, which is the height of the main room. And now I'm going to run the game and test and see what happens. Because something very important happens here. The poly object is invisible. It's still there, it's still blocking, but it's invisible. Now something else important, I'm going to spawn a non-solid object. In this case, I'm going to spawn a shotgun guy corpse. And when I open the door, it suddenly jumps up to the ceiling and then drops down when it uh, closes. And it happens again when the poly object closes. This happens because the whole geometry is transplanted and we see the vertical collision happening here. So if we want it to look and behave properly, the vertical height of the control sector must match the vertical height of the sector in the map where we want the poly object to appear. The final point I want to make very clear is that the poly object structure is defined by which lines are connected to the start line. In this example, I am doing a sliding door that consists of vertical beams. So I make a bunch of sectors that will represent beams and then I delete them to make void beams. Now I'm drawing extra lines so that these beams are connected with these lines to the start line. And I delete the extra start lines that were created this way. Now I have a beam door. And just doing a little bit of decoration, creating a place that it will slide into. And we have a sliding door that consists of beams. These are proper beams that have geometry, they have collision, etc, etc, and they work as a door, they are a part of that poly object. Now I have another bonus clip for you, and I'm going to make another sliding door. I start by giving all the main poly object line depths a bronze texture to create a transparent door with a window, placing those textures on both sides of each line depth. After that, I'm drawing another sector inside the poly object. I'm going to give the main line depths of the poly object the poly object door slide action. Now with the inner sector, I'm going to give one of the sides a shone texture and make it translucent. And the other line def, I'm going to set the line mirror action on it and remove the double-sided flag because mirrors cannot exist on double-sided line defs. And it looks like this shouldn't work, right? Now don't forget to give the mirror line def a texture, even though it's not going to be used, but it has to be there. And let's test it in the game. And we get a door that has a mirror on one side and it's translucent on the other, which seems like it shouldn't work, but it does. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well on rotating doors because it has some issues, but on sliding doors, it just works.